During the time that I was U.S. field director, Bill began to think about how can we have a world plan that will help reach the whole world. And John Heyman was asked to come, and at that time I was working with him to come and say how a film on the life of Christ could help reach the world. And it was at that meeting that Bunker and Caroline Hunt were there. And uh, Bunker said, what do you think if we finance that film? And, and Caroline in her way said, oh Bunker, I think that would be wonderful. And uh, we were within 180 days, we were filming in Israel to make the Jesus film. And it was, uh, it was the Lord used it powerfully. But along about uh, 1987, 86, 87, we were trying to figure out how are we gonna get this into the Soviet Union? And even if we get them in, the officials there are going to clamp down on anybody that shows them. Well, we got to Moscow later and we were staying in the Ruski Hotel in downtown Moscow and it was a heat wave in Moscow. And it was just so hot that the KGB left the door of the listening room up. We rode up in the elevator with these KGB officials and their listening room was right next to ours. And so when they opened their door, we saw all the uh, equipment that was in there. So we knew they were listening to our room. We turn on the television and be nothing but static. And I remember one afternoon saying, you know, they put so many listening devices in your television and it messes up the picture. Five seconds later, click, the picture comes on. So every morning, although we didn't know where the microphone is, we would look at the sprinkler and thought, that's probably where it is, that sprinkler. And we would say, hello to you men there in the listening room. Uh, we like to begin our day by reading out of the Bible. So if you have a Bible, put your thumbs in the middle and open it up. We'll be reading from the Psalms and every day we'd read to them for a solid hour. I don't know if, if they liked it or not, but we were blessed hearing the Psalms every day. But we were thinking, how can we get distribution of the Jesus film across the Soviet Union? So Jan says, well, you've got to get it on the black market. We've got to find the mafia. And I said, okay, how do we do that? I said, well, the biggest mafia people are in the Republic of Georgia. So I said, let's go, and we bought tickets and flew to Tbilisi, Georgia. And we found a person there who was a wonderful mafia person, had contact with everybody, and he became the representative of us for the Jesus film in Georgia. And it was at that time, we didn't know how to negotiate. They couldn't receive foreign currency. So we said, we will give you the latest dubbing equipment in return for you translating and dubbing the Jesus film into the Georgian language and showing it in your commercial theaters. So about a year later, we finally finished the translation of the Jesus film in the Georgian language. And sometimes people ask me, what's the greatest trip you've ever had with the Jesus film? There's no doubt about it. It was that weekend when uh, we flew into Tbilisi, Georgia, not to be followed by the KGB, but picked up by the KGB in black Chaika limousines and led down uh, in a procession down the main street of Tbilisi, Georgia to the largest meeting hall that they have in the country where 2,500 members of the Communist Party were there with all the leadership of Georgia for the first showing of a Christian film ever in the history of the Soviet Union. It was an absolutely awesome night. The head of the Georgian Orthodox Church was there to bless the film. The Poet Laureate of Georgia was there. The Vice President of the country, members of the Congress were crowded out. They were seated on every single step, way more than our fire <laughs> officials would let go. Uh, but it was just incredible anticipation. The uh, MC said, uh, tonight we have a man from the Pentagon. And he introduced John Jackson, three-star general from the Office of the Joint Chiefs of Staff in the Pentagon of the United States. And this humble man gets up and he said, every week I meet with 20 generals and admirals. And we pray for ourselves, we pray for our families, and we have been praying for you. And it was, it was like the unbelievable uh, response because they couldn't believe that American generals had been praying for them. Well, you know, at the end of the Jesus film, there is an invitation to receive Christ. And people ask me, you gonna put that invitation on there? When we had shown the film in the United States, Warner Brothers had said, we'll show the film in the theater, but we're not showing the commercial for God at the end. 
Well, I said, you know, we're going to show it in the Soviet Union until they make a stop. I can remember praying all through that time, what if, what's going to happen? And the invitation came on, nobody moved. And uh, then as they were given an opportunity to pray the prayer to receive Christ, you could begin hearing across this whole auditorium people sobbing. And then you could hear very quietly, many of them praying the prayer out, out loud, phrase by phrase. At the end, there was just this, they rose in this spontaneous uh, standing ovation for the next five or 10 minutes. And they stayed for an hour and a half, shaking our hands, tears in their eyes. They just come and grab our hands and just weep. And uh, we had asked that night if they would make comments of what they thought about the film. One 92-year-old man said, in all of my 92 years, this is the finest two hours of my life. Somebody else said, we need this film more than bread, which is not easy to get. And the head of the Georgian Film Studios, who is not only head of that, but he was also KGB, he was involved in all political things. He said, I will help you get this film to the other Soviet Socialist Republics, the other 14. And he began to call them one at a time, each of the key republics in Russia. And, it, and the people from the Ministry of Education said, you need, you need to show this to all our students in our schools. So that was the beginning of what's happened now over these last 20 years, 73,000 teachers throughout the world have been, been trained through four days. They have shown the Jesus film to uh, over 35 million of their students. But God, everywhere we went, uh, He did miracles for us. We were, we were in Volgograd and we had no Bibles. And uh, somebody in Volgograd said, you know, 30, 40 years ago, when Stalin confiscated all the Bibles in our town, he put them outside the city in a warehouse, and we think they're still there. So they went to the mayor, and the mayor said, if they're still there, you can have them. So they got a couple of college students, and they went out there and started to load up the Bibles. They were still there after 40 years. And they were almost done loading up. The, they needed two or 3,000 is all they were taking. And, uh, they noticed that one of the students was missing. And the students had been a little bit cynical, not, not so interested in the spiritual side of things. But they walked back and they saw this young college student sitting on a pile of Bibles, absolutely dissolved in tears. He had decided to steal a Bible for himself and the one he had stolen was his own grandmother's Bible written into it. And it was that kind of thing that happened over and over again. We were in Vologda and uh, one of the young teachers came up and said, uh, Dr. Ashman, we have a question. Um, we all are very interested, but we don't know how to open the doors of our heart. And that's, we just don't know how to begin. And uh, it, it was just, nobody knew exactly what they believed because they didn't believe in anything. They didn't know anything about God. It was, it was like if you said to somebody today, what, how do you feel about plumbing? You know, well, I don't feel any way about plumbing. I don't know anything about it. And it was like, how do you feel about God? I, I, I don't know. I don't know anything about Him. And I said, today we're going to see the film on the life of Jesus and that I'm going to teach you how you can open the door to Christ. Okay, we will be ready. And they all, all this whole group of teachers from one school uh, prayed to receive Christ. So it was like, you know, I think, uh, Dennis Kinlaw once said, who was the former president of Asbury, said, give me one divine moment when God acts, and I say that that moment is far superior to all the efforts of mankind throughout the centuries. And that's what we saw. We saw God acting trip after trip. He would just do things for which there was no explanation humanly. He just changed the hearts of people. So there's no doubt that what the Lord did in all of these uh, times there is just beyond what any of us could ask or think. Only God could do this. And I think that's exactly what we've found everywhere in the world, that nobody can take credit for these kinds of things. Nobody could work it out. God had to simply do it.